Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at all things corn, or as you may know it as, maize. Now corn is a bit more of a traditional crop in Farming Simulator 22, in the fact that you're going to be growing it for one of two things. You're either going to grow it for its grain, and in that case you're going to use a traditional grain harvester, and for corn, you're going to need to use a row crop header. Specifically here, we have a 12 row header. Or you may choose to harvest the entire plant. And in that case, you're going to use a forage harvester and a forage header, like the one we have right here. And then that is going to then convert your grown corn into chaff that you can then put into a silage bunker, compact blanket, and then produce silage. So let's go ahead and take a look in the shop at all the things you're gonna to need to grow corn. So first off, we're gonna need some seed. Can't grow any plant without seed and you can buy seed at the shop using the big bag pallets. We have 1,000 liters of seed for $900 right here. You could also buy a big bag bag of seed, $800 for 1,000 liters. Or you could buy a pallet of seed, as we have right here, $950 for 1,050 liters. Once you have your seed, you're going to want to use a planter in order to plant the corn in the ground. Any of the base game planters is going to allow you to plant corn from the Falcon 3, which is a 3-meter planter that requires 100 horsepower, all the way up the product stack to the Kinsey 4905 Blue Drive. And this is the particular planter we're gonna be using in this video, simply because we wanna get the job done and we're gonna get the job done quickly. Now, once you have the plant in the ground, you are pretty much set. You don't have to do anything special with respect to corn other than what you would do with other crops that would entail rolling. So you get a nice rolled seabed to get that extra bonus or using a weeder or herbicide sprayer in order to take care of your weeds. Now, once your crop is ready to harvest, this is where you have a choice. Are you growing corn for its grain, or are you growing corn for chaff? If you're growing corn for grain, you're gonna to go to the harvesters category. You're gonna need any one of these particular harvesters. Starting out, you're probably gonna be more on the smaller scale of the harvesters. If you've got the money or you've got bigger fields, then you're gonna be up here in the larger category of the harvesters. We are working with the Fent Ideal 10T for this particular video. In combination with your harvester, you're gonna need a corn header. That's gonna be found here under tools. And again, as you work up through the product stack, you're gonna go with a bigger and bigger header. The best thing to do to understand which header is gonna work for your particular harvester best is here under the harvesters category, there is a combinations. If you click on that, it will show you a combination of headers that are designed or should work best for the particular harvester that you have selected. Now, if you're gonna be harvesting for chaff, then you're going to want to go to a forage harvesters category. And again, any of these forage harvesters will work for that purpose. And once again, going to combinations will show you the collection of forage headers that you could possibly use for your particular crop. Now, if you're going to be doing corn, you're going to want one of these headers here specifically because it is going to be used for corn. Now, as far as transporting your chaff, okay, we're still talking about chaff. You're gonna to wanna to use a trailer and you wanna to want to pay attention to the trailer and make sure that it has this icon right here, which is the chaff icon. Pretty much most any trailer is gonna be able to transport chaff. Although as we move up the product stack, you're gonna see that some of these trailers are going to be a bit more specific with what they allow you to transport and as such are gonna be a bit more of a forage type trailer. Like here we have the Radium 225. It does have chaff listed right there. 
Now for this particular video, we are going to use the Annenberger Field Liner. It has an interesting trick up its sleeve I wanted to also demonstrate for you. Now, if you're going to be transporting grain, then you're going to be once again in the trailer section, but you're going to want to make sure that it has the corn icon right here, because as we have seen, some trailers are not capable of transporting corn where other trailers are. So like this one is not configured to transport corn, whereas the Strotterman is configured to transport corn as is a whole lot of other products. So make sure you look for the corn icon when you are picking a trailer. Now, as far as storing your grain, well, you're gonna be able to store your grain in any traditional silo. You would go into build mode for that. Under silos, we have several different Una silos available. These will all allow you to store grain the meridian silos will allow you to store grain. You will need to use an auger to fill the meridian silos. I do have a how-to video specifically on how to use these meridian bins and the augers to fill and remove product out of them. Or you could use these bigger silos here if you wanted to store your grain. Now, as far as chaff is concerned, you're gonna need to use a bunker silo in order to dump your chaff in. Bunker silos are gonna rotate on the 90 degrees like that. And there are several different variants. There's pull through bunker silos. There's a three sided bunker silo with one open end. And there are also various sizes of bunker silo. We're gonna demonstrate the use of that a bit later in the video. As far as production is concerned, there is the cereal factory this particular facility will allow you to use your corn in the production of cereal, although this factory also requires honey, oats, and raisins. So you're not gonna be necessarily making cereal unless you also have access to those other goods. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on putting our corn in the ground. And then we will take a look at how long and when we can plant corn if we are using seasonal growth. For this particular video, I have seasonal growth turned off. Just so I don't have to worry about matching up the game calendar with my planting cycle. to hire a helper here so that we can focus on other things as you can see we are at 98 percent yield bonus we will need to come through here with a weeder or herbicide sprayer to de-weed the field and we're also going to come through here with a roller and get the rolling bonus so that we can get our yield bonus all the way up to 100 percent now, if you are playing with seasonal growth turned on, then you will have your seasonal growth crop calendar, and you will see that we can plant corn in April and May, which is the default crop calendar, and we will then be harvesting our corn in October and November. But again, for this particular video, I have seasonal growth turned off, and we are now going to finish planting our field i'm going to go ahead and roll it and weed it like i said and we're going to come back and see how long it's going to take to move through the various growth cycles from planted to ready to harvest one month post planting we have our first emergence of our corn crop Two months after planting, we have another growth stage. Three months after planting, we have yet again another growth stage. Here we are four months after planting in our corn. Well, she has gotten quite tall. And it looks like the bottoms are starting to maybe dry out a bit. 
Now, five months post planting, we are at the final growth stage. It seems to be a little bit of a difference between the previous month and this month. I think the biggest difference maybe is kind of the corn is popped out of its husk a bit. And if we look at our growth, we can see that we are indeed in the final growth state. And with that, we are now able to, if we want, use our forage harvester on our corn. We do not have to wait until the corn is listed as ready to harvest in order to do our forage harvesting. So I've got the cloths all set up here with the forage header. As we've already talked about, I have unfolded the cloth harvester and put the pipe out with the O key. We're going to hire a helper to do our forage harvesting. And we're gonna run the tractor. Yes, I know some forage harvesters will allow you to attach a trailer to the back you can do it all with one person without having to hire a helper, but this is maybe a bit more of the traditional way of doing things. And as such, this is how I want to demonstrate it. As you can see, the forage harvester is taking the entire plant in with the header, it is then running it through some knives and chopping it up. Try to set cruise control here to be a little bit, um, a little better. And we are getting a lot of yield off of our corn crop. Corn is going to generate the most chaff with respect to per per acre per hectare of any crop. Now grass arguably will produce likely more chaff over the course of an entire year because you're going to get multiple cuttings or multiple mowings of grass whereas you're only going to get one per planting with respect to your corn now as we've seen this has taken six months so you could get I guess two plantings per year in essence per 12 months if you had the growth calendar turned off but if you are playing with the seasonal growth calendar enabled you're only going to get one harvest of corn per year whereas you're going to get up to three cuts of grass per year So once you have a full load of chaff, there's a few things you may wish to do with it. If you happen to own the biogas plant on the map that you are playing on, you may choose to bring your load of chaff down to the biogas plant and dump into, if your biogas plant has them, dump into the silage bunker. And this is where I wanted to show you the trick up the Annenberger sleeve, and that is on PC. Left mouse button, and if you scroll down, the front legs go down, and then the back raises up. So now we can basically unload in this position if we want. If we left click and move our mouse up the trailer will then come back down and the legs will then raise on the road if you right mouse button you can adjust the tongue height depending on the type of tractor you have that way it rides nice and level now if I go to unload this it's gonna say I don't have access to the land because I haven't purchased the biogas plant. You have to own the biogas plant to dump in the bunkers. Now here on Elm Creek, it's one and a half million dollars. 
It's quite an investment. So you may not have one and a half million dollars to invest in buying the biogas plant just for the purpose of using the silage bunkers. Well, that's where, as we showed at the start of the video, you can place your own silage bunkers. Maybe you have a dairy farm, cattle operation, and you want to make your own silage. Well, you'd place your own bunker down, or if you don't want to buy the biogas plant because it's too expensive, maybe you could buy a smaller placeable biogas plant. And then you'll also need to have a bunker for that. So over here, across from the shop, I have placed the small pull-through silage bunker. And in order to do that, we're going to pull in here, control I, to force unload. You have to control I to unload chaff in a silage bunker. We're going to slowly drive through the bunker to get a nice even layer of chaff here. And we're going to cover making silage in another video. We're not going to go into the full extent here. As you can see, we have our 55,000 liters. It's 1% compacted. We're going to need to compact this to 100%. Then we'll be able to cover it with a blanket. And then it will, quote unquote, cook, as I call it, until it converts to silage. Now let's go ahead and move forward one more month. And then our crop should be ready for harvest. And at that point, we'll be able to use the grain harvester to harvest our corn out of the field. Okay, I think I misspoke earlier. I think I said it was six months. We are now at six months. So I kind of lost track of track of time there for a little bit with all the, the cuts. But at any rate, we are now at six months post planting and our crop is ready to harvest. So once it's ready to harvest, you can see that the whole plant has now kind of turned a bit brown. It is all now, I guess, dead and dried, as you would say. So what we're going to do is jump in our ideal harvester. And again, we're going to use our 12 row corn header for this. Now this particular header does have the ability to fold or transport. You would fold with the X button on PC. So you won't need to use a, a header trailer for this particular header, but not all headers of this size or larger fold. So that's just something to make note of. We also need to unfold the harvester. So we'll do that. Now this particular ideal I like because you can get it with what's called ideal drive. And Ideal Drive allows you to basically get rid of the steering wheel and left and right steering is now with the joystick on the left. Pretty neat. So one thing that's really cool with respect to corn is you can kind of do a lot of it in cap without having to worry about skipping ro rows. Because what you want to do is you want to take your cone, it's right between the two pedals down there and keep it in line with the corn row right there. And as long as you have that done, then you are running straight and true and you won't have to worry about skipping any rows assuming that you've lined it all up right at the start. We zoom out and you can see our corn is flowing in here. We'll jump out so we can take a look at the whole process. And we now have our harvested corn. We get a nice chaff texture down on the ground. Because again, we are spitting out 
the, the bulk of the plant out the back of the harvester when we use our grain harvester because all we are really concerned about is the grain on the various cobs whereas opposed to our forage harvester which was collecting all of the plant all it leaves behind is the stalks itself because it's taking the entire plant and chopping it up and spinning it out into the trailer now you can indeed forage harvest ready to harvest corn it's not saying that you can't do that why i wanted to demonstrate forage harvesting in its last growth stage was simply to demonstrate that that is a capability that you can forage harvest corn at five months post planting you don't have to wait until it is fully ready to harvest uh, just to demonstrate the purpose or the use of an auger wagon we are going to unload our harvester here we're going to want to open the cover with in since this is a rather large auger wagon really wish we had some smaller auger wagons base game equipment but at any rate here we have the bergman auger wagon we're going to pull up underneath the harvester and of course the harvester needs to be running in farming simulator 22 for it to unload the reason we're going to use a tractor and an auger wagon as opposed to using our our semi or our truck to unload the harvester is that typically your tractor and your auger wagon are going to have much wider tires they're going to not compact the soil as bad as let's say a semi and a semi trailer with road tires so we'll pretend Right, that we have now a full load of grain here in our auger wagon. And we're gonna bring it up to our semi. Then for unloading, we want to O to pipe out. And with this particular auger wagon, we can use the left mouse button to change the angle left mouse button left and right will change the output angle and right mouse button left and right will change the tilt of the pipe I'm going to position it here take the tarp off our wilson trailer I really need to turn on the leave engine running function, right? And then we will unload into our truck, just like that. So as we've talked about during the intro of the video, once you have harvested your corn grain, you can store it in a silo, like the one we have right here. You just pull up to the dump station, and then hit I to unload. And then we are storing our grain into our silo. The silos in Farm Sim 22 have a total capacity. That includes a sum of all the crops stored in that particular silo that is different from previous farm sim games where the capacity was listed per crop so if this particular silo has a capacity of 400,000 liters it is a 400,000 total liter capacity as opposed to being 400,000 liters per crop so now we have stored our grain in our silo we can walk up to it and see the total amount of product we have stored in our silo if we go to our prices screen you can also see that same information here 
with the amount of respect to the amount of product we have stored. Now, as far as sell points on Elm Creek, we have the cereal factory. Ignore the fact that we have two of these. I placed one fast food restaurant, feed and grain South and Johnson's farmer's market. They are all traditional sell points where you would deliver your crop. You would unload it and get paid. Goldcrest Valley is a train off the map sell point. In order to sell to that one, you would have to place your grain in the train silo. This one right here, you'd have to place your grain in grain pool east. You would then have to rent the train, load the train, and then drive it off the map to Goldcrest Valley. We've demonstrated that in another how-to video, basically on how to sell grain off the map. Now, once you have your grain, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. You can obviously sell your grain, like we just said, or you can further process your grain into cereal with the included base game cereal factory. Or you may elect to use your grain for the purpose of feeding your pigs. So pigs are the only animal in base game farming simulator 22 that will accept corn as a food source. So over here I have a small pig pasture set up. We have five pigs in here and we can come in here and unload our corn and feed them just like that. If we take a look now at our animal screen, you can see that corn is a base food. So corn is a base food, as is sorghum. That is also a effective base food. And then as far as grain, it's wheat or barley. Then protein is going to be canola or sunflowers or soybeans. And then a root crop is going to be potatoes or sugar beets. Now, if you happen to have access to raisins as well as oats, and honey then you may elect to further process your grain into corn and if you elect to do that then you would either buy the cereal mill and place it or if it is pre-placed on the map you could buy the cereal mill the cereal mill is going to run you i believe one hundred and ten thousand dollars let's take a look here Yes, $110,000 will buy you a cereal mill. And now that we have added corn to our cereal mill, you see we already have honey, raisins, and oats in the cereal mill. We can activate production. It is going to take one unit of honey, one unit of raisins, two units of oats, and two units of corn. And it's going to output two units of cereal. And it's going to basically iterate through 4,320 units of corn every month in order to produce 4,120 units of cereal. So with that, let's go ahead and move forward one more month and we'll take a look at our cereal and at our price of cereal and see if we think further refining corn into cereal is a worthwhile endeavor. Approximately one month later, we have our cereal here. Sweet wheat, Choco Loops, Happy Hoops. <laughs> Boy, I bet you they had fun coming up with those names. That is for sure. Anyway, we have 4,000 units of cereal here and 308 units of cereal still in the factory to be produced now let's take a look and see at our prices screen corn prices are going to fluctuate right now they are you know eleven hundred dollars thirteen hundred dollars last month we saw they were fifteen hundred sixteen hundred dollars per thousand liters now cereal of course, it does require a fair number of other inputs, 
but cereal is going to sell for right now $7,500 per thousand liters. So we went through 4,000 units of corn in order to make 4,000 units of cereal. And we are going to really increase our profits. But of course, we have to have a resource for honey. We have to have a resource for raisins. And we have to have a resource for oats in order to reap the rewards of our cereal production. But if we have those if we have those resources and can satisfy those requirements, I think producing cereal is going to be a worthwhile endeavor. So guys, that is basically it with respect to corn or as you may know it as maize. We have covered how to plant corn, what you need for that, what you need in order to basically get 100% extra yield bonus after planting your corn. You'll need to have your field fully fertilized, limed, as well as weeded and rolled. Something I do want to demonstrate while we are rolling through our end credits, and that is that after harvest, you will need to plow your field with corn. It doesn't say need plowing here because I have turned off plowing for the sake of these videos, but after your corn harvest, you will need to plow your field to get maximum yield next time around. So until next time, happy farming.